Um, honestly, I think the situation sucks, and what really, really sucks about it is that, um, yes, he, he died from a seizure, but I'm pretty sure it has a lot to do with, you know, all the drugs that he was taking and um, consuming and things like that. And no, I'm not trying to, you know, be like, you know, have a rush situation where I'm saying, see guys, you see what happened? I, this is why drugs, you don't do drugs, drugs are for losers, da da da. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just simply trying to say that it sucks because this is something that could have possibly been prevented. Yeah, so I'm Dante brought up a lot of really, really good points um, because right now a lot of fans are in the grieving process and I kind of wanted to break that down and discuss from my perspective as somebody who is a recovering drug addict as well as somebody who's trying to help in the stigma and create more of a conversation around these issues. What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, I am very passionate about mental health, drug addiction, recovery, and all that. And my hope is that we can learn from what's happening in the public eye and I, I wanna see what we can learn from it to hopefully avoid some of these tragedies that are happening all around us. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So I'll be honest with you guys, I'm making this video because there's, there's been um, mixed reviews about the video I did earlier. Um, some people are, you know, thanking me uh, for discussing this topic. Um, like I said, uh, we don't know, none of us know if for sure uh, what happened to Juice World was a result of drugs. But um, I was having a conversation with somebody on Twitter the likelihood that it was related to drugs goes up, all right? Somebody without a previous medical history of seizures with a history of drug addiction, specifically to Xanax, there is more of a likelihood, but we do not know for sure. And that rubbed some people the wrong way. And one of the reasons, there's a couple reasons that I personally discuss these things when it happens. Like one of the, one of the criticisms is it's too soon. It's too soon to talk about this. And I wholeheartedly disagree, all right? For some people, um, their, their commitment is to gun laws, right? And after a mass shooting happens, everybody's talking about gun laws. And what people say is it's too soon. It's too soon to talk about gun laws, right? And I disagree with those people too. When these things are fresh in people's minds, that is the time to talk about it. It is right then when we need to talk about it because the news cycle goes so quick. We are constantly flooded with information. If you go to Twitter right now, this morning, uh, Juicy World was trending across the board and now he's still trending, but there's a bunch of other just nonsense going on. That's how quick this stuff leaves our mind. So for people like myself who are trying to make a change, trying to make a difference, trying to increase awareness, we gotta, we gotta talk about it as it happens. It's the same thing with, you know, um, when suicide happens, you know what I mean? Like the impact of discussing it right when everybody's, you know, thinking about it and hurting from it, like that is much more impactful than talking about it years later because when we're when we're in that state of heightened emotions we're going to be impacted more than like oh you know years ago robin williams took his own life you know what i mean but anyways um after seeing some of the backlash you know that i got and like i said there was plenty of good comments as well um a friend of mine actually sent me this video from my i'm dante and he brought up a lot of good points but in a lot of his in a lot of the videos that I've did on did on him, drugs were brought up a lot. Uh, it was pills, perks, it, it was Molly, everything. It was a lot of drugs that were brought up a lot, and I would address it each and every time. I was like, "Yo, is anybody hearing this? Like, I hope he does. You know, I hope this is just for the song. I hope he cuts this out. Like, stop. Uh, he needs to stop this. That I'd say it in every single video because." 
a lot of artists, you know, they come across my video, whether it's their fans uh, sending it to them or y'all sending it to them. Uh, they come across it. And I was hoping that he would eventually come across one of them, see it, and then I, you know, I could get to message him and, you know, honestly get him, you know, may man, sell them drugs, bro. You, you, you want to cut that out? You know, things like that. Uh, but that's why I would always stress it heavy in my videos because that was a serious issue that I kept noticing. It was a reoccurring topic. This wasn't just like in one song or three songs off of an album. This would be like on every single song he was talking about doing drugs. So yeah, obviously I'm Dante doesn't know or didn't know Juice World, but he was a concerned fan, right? And I think this is one of the most important things ever because again, I don't, I don't agree with the idea that we shouldn't talk about this stuff because we're a very reactive culture, right? We don't do anything until something terrible happens. Until something awful happens, we don't do anything. We don't talk about gun laws until a high school gets shot up, right? We don't talk about drug addiction until something happens or someone dies. For example, a great example is Lil Peep. Like I'm Dante's talking about, like Lil Peep was doing the same thing. Lil Peep was talking about his mental health issues. He was talking about his substance abuse issues. Next thing you know, he overdosed on a combination of Xanax that was mit mixed with fentanyl, right? Something I'm Dante's talking about is his fans were getting upset, uh, Juice World's fans were getting upset that whenever I'm Dante was reviewing tracks from Juice World, he was bringing up that Juice World was discussing his drug addiction issues. So it wasn't just in Juice World's music either. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm Dante didn't even mention the interviews, like the countless interviews where Juice World talked about his substance abuse issues. And I think that's the part that breaks my heart so much is we are watching, especially musicians, we are watching them slowly die right in front of our eyes. And I don't know what we need to do as a culture to try to remedy this. Like in my last video, I talked about the identity that people attach to their addiction or their substance abuse. It's very similar when it comes to um, mental illness, right? Like I think Chester Bennington is a prime example of that. His career, like what brought Linkin Park to fame and stardom was talking about very real mental health issues like anxiety and depression, right? But had Chester gotten over that, would, would he have lost the music and what brought him that fame? And that's something that's very tricky for artists. I, I can't even imagine. Something that I wonder, I, I get curious about, and I would love to interview a musician about this, is, you know, if certain musicians decide not to get treatment, to decide not to get help because they fear that it might take away from their music or the image that they've created, right? Like, let's put it in perspective real quick. How much, how much money do you think a rapper like Lil Peep made off of songs about using drugs? How much do you think Juice World made off of tracks talking about drugs? How many of those tracks were some of their most popular songs, right? And we think about the psychology of positive reinforcement and it's like, okay, I make a song about the drugs I'm using and it's very well received. Everybody loves it, I make money off of it, that supports myself, my family, my, my friends, whoever it is, right? So then it makes it harder, I would imagine, for them to actually quit using those substances because they're getting positively rewarded for it. And I don't know what the solution is for that, right? Because people like Juice World people like Chester Bennington, people like Lil Peep, their music is saving other people's lives. I've seen countless tweets today um, from people saying how like 
the, the music from Juice World impacted their lives in a positive way, right? But should these artists stay sick in order to help others? Like, you know, I, that that's just one of these weird things that I think we should all take into consideration. But kind of like I, I'm Dante said, like, I don't know, there's just something I, I, I think there's a problem with when we're sitting here watching somebody suffering from something as serious as a, a drug addiction and we say, don't talk about it, don't talk about it, don't talk about it. And then somebody dies and we're like, why didn't we do something about it? You know what I mean? So I don't know, I would love to know your thoughts on this um, down in the comments below. But lastly, you know, um, my heart goes out, you know, to his family and every everybody who has been affected by this. I have lost a lot of people, a lot of people, not just to drugs or alcohol, but from health issues, from suicide and everything like that. And I, I know that pain, you know what I mean? Um, but anyways, I just wanted to hop on and discuss, um, you know, I wanna also thank I'm Dante. I'm gonna link his video down below. Like this dude has 1.1 million views already and thank god like thank god this dude is talking about this to such a massive audience his reach is way further than mine so i'm glad that he is bringing this up to his community as well as everybody else who comes across that video but like i said it's an excellent video go check it out um it'll be linked down in the description and in the pinned comment all right thanks for watching i might not be uploading for a couple days i got some stuff going on but uh yeah, um, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. Feel free to reach out, DM. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, like, feel free to reach out to me. Like, I, I can't save you or your loved one, but I can point you in the right direction. All right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.